Hello. Welcome to module 49 of NPTEL NOC and introductory course on point set topology part 2. So we continue our study of ordinal topology. In a totally ordered set, every sequence has a monotone subsequence. This is an elementary result which goes under the name peak valley lemma. Maybe you have not seen it. On the other hand, this is actually important for us now. So, I would like to recall it completely. So, what is the meaning? See, you can imitate the real numbers. Real numbers, maybe you know this one. But do not use the full properties of real number. You have to use only that is totally order. No addition, no subtraction, no multiplication and so on. So that is the whole idea. So we can still prove this one just by using totally order. Every subsequence has a monotonically increasing sequence or a monotonically decreasing sequence. Some monotone subsequence will be there. That is the thing. So, Fixing a sequence, consider the following two properties. Given any n inside n, you will have a m bigger than n such that this s of m is, you know, less than or equal to uh, follow follow s s n follows s n. So this is not to be confused with uh, the order of real number that is all. So, I have carefully written this one S m is less than less than. There is a larger m for which S m is smaller. Okay. The second one is given n inside n there exists larger m such that S n is smaller than S m the other way around. Okay. If S satisfies D it follows that S has a decreasing sequence subsequence. Similarly, if f satisfies i, it will have the increasing subsequence. That is why I have put d and i. So, decreasing sequence, increasing sequence will come for by this property. So, there is nothing to prove. Therefore, I assume that neither d nor i is true. Okay. Under this, let us see what happens to the sequence. Okay. So, if possible, let S be such that neither D nor I is true. Okay. Starting with S1, for definiteness sake, we may assume that S2, 2 is bigger than 1, is less than or equal to S1. One of them has to be there, right. So, this is a symmetrical uh, operation. So, we assume S1 is less than or equal to S2. Okay. Since S does not satisfy I, that means what? If you took S2, I must be getting S3 bigger than that, some S, some SK, and bigger than that, that is not possible. So, that is the hypothesis. One we have assumed, fine. But is it true? It is not true indefinitely. So, it follows that there will be one N1 belonging to N such that. For all m bigger than n1, sm will be smaller than sn1. You cannot go further. All right. So pick up that n1. What you may assume is that I have started the sequence at sn1 itself. Okay. Just forget about the earlier part. Now what happens to sn1 plus 1? it has to be less than equal to this one, right. m is bigger, H n plus 1 is bigger than m, so it must be less than that, right. So, that is why I could have assumed, you see in the beginning I assume S1 is, S, S2 is bigger than S1. Now, I have a, a, another thing, namely this S n plus 1 is smaller than S n plus 2, it, the role is interchanged. But now, can I keep going down, down, down and so on? D says it is not possible because I have assumed that 
so the d is not true right so d is not true so it is not possible so that means what you see this is what the picture see i started with sn s1 here i keep going up maybe s2 is there but maybe s5 is there or not i come somewhere here sn1 after that if you look at the whole thing everything is smaller there is nothing bigger than this what is the meaning of this one this is a peak so that is why p1 so now the next one is definitely smaller than that because everything is smaller now so you keep going down 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 if you are successful then you have what subsequence which is con which is uh, decreasing right you keep coming down there may be in between there may be something more that don't don't worry if you keep coming down finally you will be stuck with something namely this v1 so this is a valley what is the meaning of this everything after that is bigger than v1 so they are above but they are all smaller than p1 you see because the p1 has a property this is bigger so everything is so repeat the process whatever you have done from here the next one will be bigger keep going up how far you can go somewhere where in the same thing what i happen to p1 will happen to p2 namely everything after that is smaller than p2 keep repeating you get p1 v1 p2 v2 and so on at interlaced what is interlaced uh, subsequence what is the property of p1 it is bigger than everything after that what is the property of p2 it is bigger than everything after that therefore p1 p2 p3 is a monotonically decreasing sequence indeed you are getting two of them v1 v2 v3 will be monotonically increasing sequence so either of them contradicts the assumption therefore there must be a subsequence which is monotone okay so that is the proof so i have written down it completely started with n1 you pick up n2 etc okay so it's that n i is now bigger than s of n i plus 1 but the assumption does not allow you to continue so you have to stop somewhere right so you have to keep changing the role each time okay so finally you get two monotone subsequences like this one is increasing one is decreasing the next uh, thing about now i come back to the ordinal zero omega both zero omega closed and zero omega open they are sequentially compact remember what sequentially compact every sequence has a subsequence which is convergent so we are we are discussing this uh, sequential compactness so this point 9 here is done in that background okay so how do you prove that something is sequentially compact start with an any sequence in zero omega as seen above so just use some total order ne okay first of all it is bounded any sequence is bounded that we have seen before and before that right in a well ordered stack we have seen that every countable set is bounded okay is bounded bounded inside omega omega zero omega itself therefore a monotone subsequence will be also bounded above bounded above is what is important but the going down is always true here but then it will convert to either infimum or supremum right according as the sequence is decreasing or increasing right depending upon decreasing sequence it will convert to the infimum increasing sequence converge to supremum therefore we have proved that every sequence has a convergent subsequence okay so point 9 is used only to at a only to get a monotone subsequence 
this monotone suffix i don't know whether it is increasing or decreasing so both of them you have to take the case both of them will converge in any case because it's bounded uh, this is also standard result in analysis namely in a in real line if you have a bounded monotone sequence it is convergent so there it is the property of uh, the existence of least upper bound and greatest lower bound okay so we have we have more or less proved that theorem also here in this approach because all that you have to assume all that you have to do is here is just the total order that's all <coughs> and of course as you assumption that least upper bound and greatest lower bound exist which we have proved separately for this zero omega or well ordered sets the next thing is zero omega open is first countable and t1 okay t is actually t2 we have seen and hence the above result implies that it is limit point compact and countably compact also so i will try to recall these things okay so let me go through this this one sequentially compactness implies limit point compactness under the axiom t1 and first countability so the converse is also true always sequential compactness implies these two but under the t1 ness first countability the uh, then t1 uh, ness so they will imply uh, limit point compactness implies sequential compactness this is what we have seen actually you can have a look at this uh, picture remember so this picture tell you at this one so this is limit point compactness here this countable compactness here plus t1 limit point compact plus t1 will imply countable compactness T1 plus first countable in limit point compact imply sequential compactness. Okay, from here to here you can come come back. This is the trick. All right. So you can recall. I have just recalled that one for your ready reference. So let us go back here now. Yeah. So zero omega is first countable. Zero omega closure is not first computable. That's what we have seen, right? And of course, it's T one uh, because it is T two also. Hence, the above result that it is sequential compactness implies that it is limit point compact and countably compact also. Of course, zero omega so since it is not compact, this implies that zero omega open is not Lindelof. All right, because once it is Lindelof. and countably compact it will be compact remember lindelof means what every open cover has a countable sub cover countably compact means what every countable sub sub cover has a countable cover has a finite sub cover so combining these two would have got compact so important thing we have derived is zero omega is not lindelof okay next if a and b are any two non empty disjoint closed subsets in zero omega then at least one of them is countable and is closed in zero omega so you are slowly going towards normality here so take two disjoint closed subsets of zero omega okay of course non empty here start with at least one of them is countable it's a very strong uh, condition and that countable set is closed in zero omega omega closed a closed subset here may not be closed here right how because this capital omega may be a limit point so this says that capital omega is not a limit point this we know already because any countable subset of zero omega is already bounded inside zero omega So this part we know already, right? So let us see how this this one works. We are part of it we have already seen. Let y bar denote the closure of y in zero omega omega closed okay, in the larger space. 
just for in this part otherwise closure closure where is 0 omega or 0 omega i will have too many notations here i don't want to have that okay so for any subset y of 0 omega let the y bar denote the closure is 0 omega closure now look at the case wherein a bar union b bar okay is contained inside 0 omega it need not be this is a case i am talking about it need not happen this one. suppose this is true then both are bounded in 0 omega right because they are close close subsets of now inside 0 omega they are close subset contained in here does not matter so bounded inside this one therefore from our earlier result which we have just seen last time both of them are countable therefore a bar is already a because a is closed you know this they are inside this one a is closed in uh, 0 omega b bar is already b and hence both a and b are closed in 0 omega and countable ok is a stronger thing which we have so we are through so now come to otherwise means what now suppose a bar union b bar will contain the this element capital omega ok so for otherwise by symmetry we may assume that capital omega is inside a bar ok interchange a and b if you want that is all suppose this capital omega is in b bar also that can also happen right then given b naught inside 0 omega open we have this a intersection b naught uh, uh, omega close is non empty because all these open subsets must intersect a because omega is inside capital omega is inside a bar is non empty and hence we get an element b naught we get an element L and b naught is there b naught less than a 1 inside a ok now apply the same thing to a 1 to omega this is a neighborhood of capital omega intersection b that is non empty so you get a element b 1 inside b bigger than a 1 repeat this process what you get you will get interlaced sequence a 1 less than b 1 less than a 2 less than b 2 less than and so on right so where are they going each time they are inside a smaller thing as is the increasing sequence that is the whole idea ok so we observe that this interlaced sequence ok they must have a same supremum they have same limit this is what we have seen earlier and that limit must be inside 0 omega ok but then because it is any sequence which has which converge this has to converge inside 0 omega only the sequence is inside 0 omega so it does not converge to capital omega no sequence converges to capital omega but then s itself will be in a bar intersection 0 omega which is a and s is also in b bar intersection 0 with b this means s is inside a intersection b and that is a contradiction because a intersection b is empty to begin with ok they are disjoint closed subsets of 0 omega to begin with so therefore if we assume a is inside a bar instead omega is inside a bar then omega is not inside b bar but that means b itself is closed inside b itself is closed inside 0 omega ok anything which is closed inside 0 omega that is a compact but now this compact subset is inside 0 omega open therefore b is countable so this we have seen already so we wanted to prove one of them is countable right automatically it will be closed that part will be there countable and closed here that is all now we will use this one in a meaningful way namely to prove that 0 omega open is normal we already know that 0 omega open is Hausdorff use this fact 
that zero omega closed is normal and t2 actually is a compact and t2 space which is normal right therefore starting with the two disjoint closed subsets here okay you go to the closures of them inside zero omega closure just now what we have shown is they are themselves closed the closures are closed and disjoint because only omega bar is the question that belongs to only one of them what does that mean you can separate them inside zero omega bar zero omega closure by two open subsets disjoint open subsets intersect these disjoint open subsets with zero omega open so that will give you disjoint closed subsets of these two closed subsets disjoint open subsets containing respectively these two open subsets within zero omega open okay thus this is this space is normal it is already t2 so it is a t4 space okay the next thing is the aim of it's all this if you take the product of zero omega open cross with zero omega closed okay let us denote this one by t this is going to be a wonderful example now so i am not taking zero omega cross zero omega that will be compact cross compact it will be compact okay so this is going to give you a number of counter examples okay so now we have some notational problem here you see we have been using uh, the ordered pair kind of a comma b to denote intervals both inside uh, uh, real number systems as well as any ordered sets right but now the ordered pair we have to write here so i will not use that notation for ordered pairs i will restrict it to open intervals only so ordered pairs will be will be denoted by x cross y now so this is an element in the standard ordered pair notation it would have been x comma y brackets right so that notation will not be used for for some time in this part now okay so with that convention we shall show that t this product is not normal this is normal this actually compact hausdorff set yet the product is not normal so that is a strong counter example for you know product is not normal was pro promised uh, in part 1 but we didn't prove any examples there so here is an example a beautiful example so let us have this standard notation delta denotes the diagonal x cross x where x varies over zero omega closed but i don't want to go to zero omega cross zero omega but i want to be inside t so take a to be delta intersection t okay so last point omega cross omega is not there that's all and b equal to zero omega open cross singleton omega so second factor has uh, omega here right i can take that so this a and b are subsets of t obviously they are disjoint all right in this part omega cross omega is not there but here there is no omega cross omega either so anyway these are all so this is like a top line and this is the diagonal goes all the way near but the intersection point is not there that would have been omega cross omega so these two are disjoint closed subsets since zero omega bar is with this uh, closure is hausdorff this delta is closed therefore a intersection that delta intersection t this a a is closed in t okay similarly singleton is closed so this 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 op, this open subset is closed in t it is in zero comma t so this is closed in t all right 
also A intersection B is empty. Is that clear? So, now we claim that there are no disjoint open subsets U and V inside T such that A is inside U and B is inside V. So, that will complete the proof that T is not normal. So, we have to do a little bit of work here. Assume on the contrary, that means what you start with two open subsets, pretend they are non you know they contain uh, those two closed subsets A and B respectively and their intersection is non uh, intersection is empty you will arrive at a contradiction that is the whole idea ok assume the contrary fix each for each x belonging to 0 omega you just fix one element 0 omega look at the subspace the vertical subspace m x equal to singleton x cross 0 omega. So, that is an element of t that is a that is a subset of t right and it is homeomorphic to 0 omega because I first factor I am singleton set. Then if you take v u and v are open subsets right v intersection m x that will be a neighborhood of x cross omega, x cross omega is one of the points inside B, right. So, V contains uh, B. So, x cross omega is inside V. So, it is also inside M x. So, so this, this is a neighborhood of x cross omega inside M x, ok. Therefore, V intersection M x minus singleton x cross omega this is a punctured neighborhood that is non empty that is it is an open subset and this is a singleton ok that is non empty subset. If you put R x equal to all the second coordinate y such that this x is less than y ok this is our old notation sorry this is just uh, the right ray it follows that this is this non empty set what is this v intersection m x minus this one this non empty you are seeing, but this is actually contained inside x cross r x minus u ok. So, let me show all these things in a picture just to see that you are not completely lost. So, this is my t this is 0 cross you know this is just uh, 0 cross this whole thing is omega open and this way I have put 0 co comma omega closed. So, that is a cross this, this is the co the second factor this is the first factor ok. So, I have taken u here this a here this is the diagonal minus this point this point omega cross omega is not there ok. Now, B is here this is just uh, this singleton x this singleton 0 cross all this B uh, here the, except this point is not there. So, these two are disjoint subsets and I have taken this dot 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 here u is an open neighborhood of this A and V is an open neighborhood of V and I am pretending they are disjoint what is happening when you keep co coming closure to closure I do not know ok. So, that is where the mystery is there finally, we will get a contradiction there. So, what I have done fixing x here on this axis namely x cross 0 look at this vertical line ok that is my m x. This m x a this v intersection m x this portion is a neighborhood of this x cross omega. If you throw away this point this is part is non empty ok. This u is disjoint from that if whether I throw it away or not this will still be non empty that is all I am telling you ok. So, r x is what take any x here x has come here somewhere ok x is here x, x comma x. If you take 
everything above that, that is Rx. So this is from here to here, it is x cross Rx. Throw away my u, this is u part, okay. So this, this part will be still non-empty, it's all that I am telling you. And it contains v minus, sorry, v, v intersection mx, this line minus this point. So that is all so far we have done. This v intersection mx minus x cross omega is contained in x cross rx minus u. Okay. So that is non-empty set. So we can define a function here, namely take the minimum of all all elements y such that x cross y is inside this non-empty set x cross rx minus u. So what is this in this picture? This is the minimum alpha x. Okay, among all y second coordinate, first coordinate is x cross y such that you know they are inside this rx minus u. Okay, so that is the definition x cross rx minus u. Take the minimum. So this is a function now because these are non empty subsets for each x. Okay, alpha x is some some point of 0 omega for each x. Okay. Starting with any x1 inside 0 omega, inductively you define xn equal to alpha of xn minus 1. So you see now the induction process starts. Maybe I started here. Okay. Now alpha of this one will be some point here. Okay. So that point will be somewhere here. Then you have to take alpha of that will be some point here. That point will be somewhere here. Now I have alpha of that you will get. That point will be somewhere here. You take alpha of that and so on. Okay, so this is the inductive process here. Namely, starting with x1 belong to 0 omega, anything, wherever you want to start. Inductively define x2 equal to alpha of x1, x3 equal to alpha of x2 and so on. So obtain a sequence xn inside 0 omega, which is monotonically increasing. Why? Look at this one. This alpha x is bigger than x because x comma x is inside u. So no chance that the, this alpha x will be the minimum of this one will be less than that. It's actually away from that. It's bigger than that. Okay. So this is a strictly monotonically increasing sequence converging to some point in zero omega. Any sequence in zero omega which is monotonic has to converge inside 0 omega, that is all. But then the sequence xn cross alpha xn, where does it convert to? xn is going to y. Alpha xn is bigger than that, so it must go to bigger than that one. But alpha xn is dominated by again xn plus 1 and so on. Right? So alpha xn is nothing but the same sequence xn, except the indexing is changed. So both the both of them converge to same point. So they are same sequences except indexing is changed, that is all. So that will convert to y cross y inside A which is contained inside U by definition. Whereas none of the terms of this sequence is inside U. Right? Look at this point x comma alpha x is this point right when you take uh, uh, xn plus 1 xn plus 1 alpha xn plus 1 will be in this point like that though they are not inside you so that's a contradiction okay so this proves that t is not normal so finally why this uh, Notation T because this is called Tikhonov's plank. Okay, this example is called Tikhonov's plank. In conclusion, we say normality is not finite productive. So, as a conclusion, we can say that Tikhonov's plank is not paracompact paracompact Hausdorff spaces, paracompact 
regular space, it will be normal. That's what we have seen already. It follows that zero omega, okay, is not paracompact because paracompact cross paracompact would have been paracompact. So zero omega itself is not compact. <laughs> okay, so in one single example, you have so many, so many counter examples here. There will be more to come. This is another wonderful property of zero omega. Every continuous function, zero omega to r, is eventually a constant. Real world continuous functions are all eventually constants. See, the role is reversed here. Usually, if you have a connected space, and a continuous function from r into a, uh, sorry r into a disconnected space a, a connected space into a disconnected space okay or a discrete space then it's a constant that is the way you have been all the time doing so this is highly connected right which is a nice connected space this is the one which has problems this disconnected thing but this is the other way around now. This is a eventually constant. Okay. So, what is the meaning of that? There exists some x inside 0 omega such that f of the right ray rx, x to omega, that is a single term. By composing with a homeomorphism g from r to 0, 1, because any homeomorphism you can compose with a 0, 1, you can, you can take. Uh, uh, tan inverse or whatever, there are many. We may assume that the function is bounded first of all, take the actual taking value 0, 1. Okay. If I show this is uh, eventually constant, then f will be also eventually constant. So, let us assume f is bounded. Put rx equal to all y inside 0 omega, if this is the old notation I am changing here, now I am taking a closure here. Okay, instead of r bar of x, that's all. We shall claim that there exists a monotonically increasing sequence xn in 0 omega such that the diameter of f of r xn, f of r xn is a subset of r. So, diameter of that makes sense because this is a matrix space. That is less than 2 third raised to n. Some number raised to n, that number is less than 1 is important for us. Then, if you take x as a limit of x n, it will follow that f of r x is a single term. Okay, this Cantor's theorem, you know, balls of radius smaller and smaller converge into 0. Okay, it will be in the intersection f of r x n. So, it must be a single term. So, that is the way we are going to prove this theorem. Just by proving that you know, as constructed of monotonically increasing sequence in 0 omega, which will automatically converge, and that converging point will be our x, okay, then f of r x contained inside each of them being the smallest subset of that, okay, therefore it is contained in the intersection, therefore it is of single term, that is the way. All right, so let us construct this sequence. Given, so we are going to prove slightly uh, different statement here, inductive statement here, and then apply it. Okay, so this statement is as follows: This S, given x belonging to zero omega, let g from this right ray to a b be a continuous function. Okay, right, right now recall this is I have taken as a closed uh, array. Okay, suppose you have a continuous function which is bounded, that is the whole idea a to b. Then there exists a y bigger than x, that is an element of r x such that g of r y is contained inside the first two third or the second two third. The first two third means what a to 
a plus two third of b minus a. B minus a is the length of this one. I am adding that. Or it is a plus one third of b minus a to all the term b. So that is again a two third length. Okay. So first two third or second two third. They are not uh, disjoint by the way. Remember that. That's fine. I want to say it is either here or here. It may be in the intersection also. That is good enough for me. No problem. It is contained in one of them is important. That is what I have. Then we construct a sequence X n as follows. See, first I had A B, right? Then if this A B is zero one, then what happens? R of G of R Y will be the maximum radius of uh, the diameter of that one will be two third. Apply this G. If apply the same thing to this function. Repeat this process. You will get another y two, okay, such that the diameter of the new thing will be two third of that. Uh, that is what we are going to do. So then we construct a sequence mm -hmm. x n as follows. Start with x not belonging to zero omega. Take g equal to f. Take x one equal to y as given in S. Having defined x n, repeat the above step to the function g, which is restricted to f x n. You get x n plus one. Okay, this S is a general statement. I am starting with this hypothesis. F is from zero one to zero one to R, but I have converted the G from R. Uh, this uh, F is zero one to zero omega to zero one. Okay, so to begin with, radius is one. This very sec sec uh, second stage, very uh, first stage, I am getting the radius, uh, the diameter, two third. Next, I will get two third into two third, and so on. Okay, so we have to prove this statement. Once we prove this one, this inductive step is over. Then the proof is over. All right. So let us prove this statement S now. So let us prove. Look at the two disjoint closed subsets, A plus. A comma A plus one third of B minus A, and G inverse of A plus two third of B minus A to B. This means these are one third one third now, like Cantor set. Okay, in, in the construction of Cantor set, A to one third length, and then one third length to entire B. They are disjoint. If you take G inverse of that, they will be disjoint subsets of zero comma omega. What do you know about the disjoint closed subsets of zero comma omega? We have done something, you see, so that can be used now. As seen before, one of them is countable, okay, and so has an upper bound. Say the first one is bounded by y. Which one? This or that one doesn't matter symmetrically. So let us say, assume this is bounded. By y, this y is an element of what? Element of G inverse of, you know, uh, sorry, element of the bound domain of G, namely A B. G is a function, sorry, in R X. So y is bigger than X. That's all. Okay, so we get a y. That's all as seen above. One of them is countable, and hence we have this. This means that G of R y. Is contained inside this one. Likewise, if the second one is bounded by y, then you would have g of r y is contained inside this part. So that is the statement. Is. Okay. So why I separated out this one, the normality, uh, directly instead of proving a and b are disjoint closed subsets, find open subsets and so on. Disjoint closed subsets have have themselves some. Interesting property, namely, one of them has to be countable, and that is used here. So next thing is a, a strong conclusion. Okay, the first thing is zero omega closure is the alexander of compact one point compactification of zero omega open 
this is very easy to see by the very definition of this there is only one extra point right and what are the neighborhoods of this omega take any neighborhood system something like alpha something and, and a x open to omega capital complement the complement is what complement is a bounded subset is countable right so it's a compact also that is the definition of neighborhoods for alexander of one, uh, one point compactification the complements must be co compact subsets of the given space okay in particular if you want alexander's compactification you should see that this is a hausdorff space to begin with zero omega and it's locally compact also okay <laughs> yeah anyway finally it is it is a subspace of a compact hausdorff space so it's locally compact also so alexander's one point compactification makes sense if the extra point here is uh, denoted by infinity that infinity you can send it to this capital omega to get a homeomorphism that's all so whichever way you want to so it is easy to see that this is the alexander of one point compactification of the open zero omega it is also the stone check compactification because because of this property that every continuous function zero omega to r is eventually a constant therefore you can extend it so you can take zero omega open uh, zero omega uh, the o, o, instead of taking the whole of r take just the real valued functions taking value in inside the o, this closed interval okay it must be eventually constant right once it is eventually constant you can extend it continuously to take f of capital omega to that constant so every continuous function from 0 omega to 0 1 can be extended to 0 omega closed that is the characterization of stone check compactification so that is what we have to remind, uh, remember now okay any space which contains this one and compact okay is having this property of extension of continuous functions into any uh, into zero one open uh, closed interval zero one has the has the property that it must be a homium homeo you know equivalent equivalent to the stone check compactification that is the meaning of characterization of stone check compactification therefore the, the closed ordinal zero to omega closed is a stone check compactification of zero to omega also okay there is a final thing here since zero omega is a t4 space okay t1 and regular that's enough so it is t4 actually its wallman compactification exists and being normal we have seen that it is just an exercise to you the if you have t4 space the wallman compactification is hausdorff so we have got this one as a hausdorff space then we have a, made a remark that whenever the wallman compactification is a hausdorff space it is the same as stone check compactification okay so that is another remark which we have studied all these things so we conclude that zero comma omega closed is three different compactifications of zero comma omega open i don't know any other space having this such a property So here is some more concluding remarks. Though zero omega is compact Hausdorff, it has a subspace Y which is not compactly generated. See, we wanted to have an example of 
a space which is you know compactly generated but the subspace is not compactly generated this seems to be a simplest example i have studied all this this now is easy example for us the, the original space is compact hausdorff obviously it is compactly generated but the subspace we have a subspace here which is not compactly generated so what is that subspace let us see take y to be obtained by zero omega you know as a subspace of this by deleting all the limit ordinals except the the top one capital omega like for, for the first thing i will omit is little omega then i will omit twice omega then i will omit three times omega then i shall try to omega, omega square and all those limit ordinals are omitted i will deal with the last one i will keep it okay we first claim that every compact subset of subset k of y is finite now every compact subset of this one which is uh, does not contain omega we have seen that it is countable now we are claiming something more stronger every compact subset of this subset y automatically it is compact in zero omega but it is subset of y then it is finite for k will then be compact as a subspace of zero omega right if k were infinite first of all it's countable if it's infinite countable we can then extract a strictly increasing sequence in k which will converge to zero converge to some point in zero omega okay and the limit point that will be limit ordinal the limit being the limit point it will be inside k but k is inside y but y does not contain any limit ordinals inside zero omega open so that's a contradiction so k has to be finite okay now once once you have that okay it follows that if u equal to y minus omega we throw a omega also this will meet every compact subset of y in a closed subset okay because it is just finite yet u is not closed i am take u equal to y minus just omega okay yet u is not closed inside y obviously because y it is a limit point of this okay remember compactly generated means what for every compact subset u intersection k is a closed subset inside k then u itself must be closed inside the original space and that is violated here because take any subset k which is compact inside y that is called finite uh, obviously then u intersection that will be a finite subset and finite subsets are closed inside a hausdorff space so they are all closed inside k that means for every k this is true that means u should have been closed inside y minus omega inside y right but this u contains this capital omega as a limit point so that is a contradiction therefore this sub this space y is not compactly generated okay i think you must have been satisfied with so many properties wonderful properties topological properties of this zero omega so that justifies the uh, efforts in studying this ordinals okay so next time we will do one one more example using the ordinals but we will construct something more some some more interesting things for uh, from the topology point of view thank you